My name is Diana Wells. I have played lots of roles at Ashoka, including starting as an unpaid intern in 1988, um, but helping to uh, develop our fellowship work in those early days, build measuring effectiveness, lead venture, president for 12 years, and now a member of the leadership team working again on articulating our impact uh, for framework change, uh, working with Ashoka U, and uh, building partnerships for all Ashoka. Um, one thing folks may not know about me is that I love to read novels. It's how I understand the world. And uh, it comes in part from my dad, who was an English literature professor professor and always ensured I had a good book in my hands and from him I learned a lot about epic journeys and epic journeys are what I feel that we're all on at Ashoka. It's helped me understand uh, social entrepreneurs and their courage and their tenacity and perseverance and the value of those things because it helps you uh, get the benefit of understanding uh, and seeing the changes that you are helping, uh, you are helping to envision in the world. So, uh, my own PhD work was on social movements, and it was when I came back to Ashoka in '97 that we first began to talk about everyone a change maker as a social first social entrepreneurship as a social movement and then everyone a change maker and as we think through this next phase of Ashoka with CEJ 1, 2 and all the rest that will come those are really about building uh, social movements and it's been thrilling to be part of Ashoka and in this uh, in this transition as we think about uh, as we think about building social movements more deliberately uh, globally. So what is framework change? Framework change is helping people see differently so they can do differently. And it's what Ashoka has been doing from the beginning, even if we didn't call it that. So social entrepreneurship was our first framework change. And having done what we've done with that, gives us the credibility to do the next pieces that we're doing. So let's talk a little bit about how we did the work to build a movement around social entrepreneurship. First of all, we came up with a word. Bill Drayton came up with the word. And language is a hugely powerful piece to help people see differently so they can do differently. At the time, uh, in those years, when we talked about social entrepreneurship, people would ask me or would comment that that's an oxymoron. Um, but it really isn't. The, the, friend, the original French definition of entrepreneurship had nothing to do with business. It was about doing something, doing something, something new. And we've taken that concept and built an enormous set of things. A social entrepreneur is someone who envisions a world that does not yet exist, but lives in that place and brings people along to get there. So as we were developing this concept, the language, we went to find these people and shine a spotlight. And we proved that they exist everywhere. They exist across time, across history. The way we were able to move to new regions and new markets is we were able to find the historic analogs that people understood and everybody knew, including Ashoka, Emperor Ashoka himself, who envisioned a whole series of possibilities that didn't yet exist the first grain bank that we know of in times of famine, planting trees along pathways so people could move in the heat of the day comfortably. So we found new language. We developed that language. We found walking, talking examples. So people had to accept that change is possible and that 
there were these living, breathing beings <laughs> uh, across time and space that helped us chip away at, at the belief that this wasn't something that was possible. And we did that and found people who were the early adopters, who were with us. And it was a small group, but it was a group who, who were attracted by the idea and were convinced over time and traveled with us, many of whom you know. Uh, Bill Drayton, Bill Carter, Jan Visick, uh, David Bornstein, David Bombright, Michael Gallagher. Some, many of these people are still in our orbit and there are many, many others that I'm not naming. Fred Hayhuach on our board, Kyle Zimmer, all of our board members uh, have been with us um, in multiple ways over, over time. And those early adopters help give credibility um, to these concepts and that consistency and validation over time is critical. We move there from finding partners or partners finding us who helped us through this wholesale uh, to move away from the one by one retail model to helping us spread the idea in big ways. So our partnership with Skoll Foundation, uh, the partnership with Omidyar uh, Network and their commitment to help us bring the idea to brand new geographies that didn't exist, including the Middle East and Western Europe, um, was critical. And the next, and David Bornstein's writing, How to Change the World, was a huge boost. And our uh, investment in, in working with him those years uh, has, has you know, that book now is in 32 languages, or at least 32, um, and helped bring that concept. I can't tell you how many people I've interviewed as uh, potential team members here who and fellows who, when you ask them how they first heard about Ashoka, it's because of how to change the world. Um, funders, partners learned about us that way. So... Uh, you know, mavens and wholesale partners who helped us spread the word have been critical. And, and then the open, you know, the open phase of social entrepreneurship where, where so much has spread, um, where our ideas uh, were taken up by others to create and build new secondary supports for a new field, uh, again, uh, evidence of framework change, evidence that uh, the idea is accepted and has moved. The and you know we see now co corporations, philanthropists, government, universities all are invested in helping spread the idea of social entrepreneurship. And our work in building that infrastructure is finished. For so many years, our theory of change, which was there's no better way to invest in long-term social change than finding a social entrepreneur who has a system change idea. And we found metrics to track our progress there, where we were ensuring that we were doing the, the that we were doing our work effectively by uh, making sure the people we were bringing into our network, we were indeed changing systems. In order to do that, we had to find what are the measures of system change. And those measures still form the basis of our tracking how we're doing in terms of building our fellowship. Um, so they are are they changing policy? Are their ideas being self-replicated, replicated by other external? Um, are, they, are those ideas being copied and spread by others? So we're measuring not size and scale of organization, but instead the spread of the idea. 
And this gets to why social entrepreneurs are so different from business entrepreneurs because they're not trying to own or create a market. They're trying to get their solutions into as many hands as possible, as quickly as possible. So our work has been, and our fellowship work has been in service of helping fellows do just that. As we have grown, and I remember the days in the late 80s when I would hear Bill Drain, when as an unpaid intern, when we had only 100 fellows, uh, Bill was already envisioning a moment in time when we would have enough fellows in a field that we would be able to recognize patterns. And even with you know, a couple hundred fellows, we were seeing uh, something pop with the fellows who were working with young people and this idea that they were putting young people in charge. And that was part of the success of their reaching scale. But another measure of how they were getting their work done, which is giving new roles to people um, that to be change makers. We weren't talking about it quite in those terms yet, but the word change makers was the title of our, um, our India country newsletter that came out monthly. And then that became the magazine, print magazine, and then the online journal, which then change makers turned into uh, the collaborative competitions and now challenges that they run. Um, and the change makers platform brought an enormous visibility to Ashoka in that it allowed us to connect with people who were not having, to, to people where we didn't have an office. Um, for the first time, and thanks to the advent of the internet, um, we, we were able to scale and reach major new audiences. Um, as we fast forward, that same way of helping people see differently so they can do differently, we're applying to each of our next C, uh, collaborative entrepreneurship jujitsus. So empathy and team change making are the new CEJs similar to social entrepreneurship. There is a, an end goal we are articulating. Every child must master empathy. Every team must master change making in the title of what it is we're doing. The, the solution is named and it's not you know it's not simply a target population and it's certainly not an articulation of a problem it's an articulation of a solution every child must master empathy every team change making and that has been core to how we communicate from the beginning um, and uh, again the use of language and the use of where it is we want people to go. As we think about our work with New Fields 2020 uh, and the role of venture in our Everyone a Change Maker theory of change now, it's venture's role to help us develop those new fields from which the new paradigms and the new CEJs will emerge. And we will only get there once we have a critical mass of fellows to help us uh, be able to surface those patterns. And if we are on to a new field, um, it's where social, we know that's where we'll find social entrepreneurs. It's where they gravitate to, um, to something in, a, in major disruption. Um, and uh, with committed partners and funding will be able to find those solutions much more quickly to accelerate the speed at which we can get to the solutions as we've gone to 
gotten to for social entrepreneurship. Um, so from the base of fellows and fellows ideas and our venture process, we find and identify a new paradigm. We can begin to communicate that new paradigm and surface the early adopters and the folks who are with us in this new collaborative community. We co-build for this next phase, which is finding uh, the wholesale partners, the publishers, the media partners who will help us get that new paradigm out and articulated. And we then can move to letting many flowers bloom and that idea spread, just as we look to idea spread as the measure of success for a social entrepreneur who's changed a system, so it is with our own work and our own CEJs. And the last phase of, of our framework change process is helping ensure that the work is irreversible. And that's supporting in ongoing ways some of the institutions or ways for ongoing, for the ideas to be governed in an ongoing way. But it doesn't mean a lot of staff time or, or project management. It's maintaining uh, a level of conversations and, and partnerships that hold uh, those hold ourselves accountable or and hold those ideas sort of like a watchdog kind of um, concept. So uh, we are making sure that we're, those ideas don't stray too far. How did we get to everyone a change maker? It was really a question that Pierre Omidyar posed to us. What is the, and the question was, what is social entrepreneurship's ultimate end and goal? Anna Maria Schindler led a global business plan process where, with stakeholders around Ashoka and globally, uh, which is how we got to articulating this next phase as everyone a change maker. And it's been a period over the last decade as we learn more and more. It's part of the beauty of Ashoka is that we have team members across the globe in multiple contexts, always feeding in uh, across and to each other and debating uh, to help us understand more clearly this reality that we are living in, but also where we want to go. And uh, more and more that is a global conversation within Ashoka. And it's been amazing to witness and see and a real privilege to be a part of. As Ashoka has evolved and developed and moved from social entrepreneurship to everyone a change maker, venture remains very much at the, at the core. Venture is how we know everything we know about social change. It's our pedagogy. And we there's another piece about venture and that's the, the venture process and how much we gain from that deep dive process. Uh, we have a snapshot of, with each fellow, we understand the history of the problem and an understanding of why this new solution is different from things that have come before. It's a remarkable, set of data about the state of the world, the state of a country, a region, a field, um, and we are getting better at working through how we do that. There's another piece though, which is venture has really been our culture building process at Ashoka. It is in the venture process where we learn to do a deep dive in understanding a problem and a solution. It is our deep dive in practicing empathy, deep listening, in, and in learning and offering 
ideas in a way that is what I have referred to as midwifing ideas, um, where we are not teaching strategy, we are not being prescriptive. That venture process is a learning process. And uh, that in and of itself is a great uh, snapshot of Ashoka's culture. It's what we should all be doing every day together. And there is a collaborative piece to the venture process too. Remember, it's the same criteria applied by five differently placed sets of people. And if anyone at any, any one person at any stage of that process disagrees, there's not consensus and that doesn't move forward. Just think about that for a second in a moment in history when there's so much division. At Ashoka, our venture process builds consensus and collaboration and is, involves players from multiple different continents. It's really extraordinary and um, it's something that everybody at Ashoka can and should experience and many more once we developed our hiring criteria and our hiring process to mirror that process many more are doing that even if they're not in the venture process and our Ashoka Young change makers work will enable many more but to make sure that we all recognize and appreciate the culture building piece in and practices uh, that are involved in that process. Thank you all for being here. It's very exciting. We have the chance over the next days to co-build this, this work together, and it's great you could be here. Looking forward to meeting and having time with each of you.